Our news is brought to you by Alive. Believe in best. Tonight on Our News, government's new VAT plan promises minimal exemptions. The PM defends claims of a $1 billion fiscal disparity. A new deputy governor general is sworn in. Plus, dozens of people get the jab at a pop-up event. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Christina Dragovich. Topping news tonight, it's unlikely that value-added tax will go back up to 12.5% once it's reduced to 10%, according to Economic Minister Michael Halkidis. Halkidis says government anticipates collecting $90 million over what the Minnes administration projected for the fiscal year. Jillian Gray has that. We don't expect that we have to go back to 12% next year. I think we have taken it out of our, of our plan, and in our plan it says 10. We're prepared to go ahead with 10%. It's a campaign promise fulfilled, according to Economic Minister Michael Halkidis. Come next year, that will be reduced to 10%. Halkidis going a step further, saying that rate may become permanent once reduced. We believe that we can exist with a 10 with a growing economy, improved revenue administration. All right. So um, I think our idea is that we should be able to exist with 10 going forward. Government is projecting that capital expenditure will be down by $54 million as revenue increases $92 million over what was projected in the pre-election budget. With that, Halkidis says reducing VAT to 10 percent won't affect the government's revenue collection. We had an entire unit doing audits, doing investigations, making sure that those who owe are paying, those who aren't able to pay the whole thing, make sure there's, um, you know, payment plans in place. Breadbasket items and medicine, which were exempt from VAT when the Minnes administration increased the tax to 12 percent, will now have VAT added back when the tax is reduced to 10 percent. The biggest uh, purchaser of medicine in the Bahamas is the government of the Bahamas. Those who require assistance in getting that can do so through the um, national drug plan. This hot button issue is expected to be discussed extensively. The rationale is that people will have more money to save, invest, spend and stimulate the economy once VAT is reduced. The economic minister says overall they're expecting a reduction in the cost of living. We have things like education, um, financial services, which is um, considered investing in saving and not consumption, that were exempt. All right. Um, and so we are we are going back to the model that is minimal exemptions, except for those for those things and um, at a lower rate. And so we think when you take everything, the entire picture, you will see a reduction in the cost of living. Now again, Halkita said these changes are to make life more manageable for the most vulnerable. They're expected to come into effect January 2022. Reporting for our news, I'm Jillian Gray. Well, one cabinet minister is coming to the defense of his government's plans to shift value-added tax. Freetown Member of Parliament Wayne Monroe QC says Bahamians should do the math for themselves. Berthony McDermott reports. National Security Minister Wayne Monroe maintains that the argument that low-income families will be hardest hit by the reintroduction of value-added tax across the board is offensive to them. This concept that the only thing low-income families consume are bread boxed items is insulting the low-income families. Low-income families do consume in large quantities items that will now experience a 2% fall in value. On Wednesday, Prime Minister Philip Davis said the value decrease will come no later than January 1st. That means VAT will be placed on things like medication and breadbasket items. The Freetown MP believes families will spend less at the grocery stores. He's inviting Bahamians to do the math for themselves. Unless you're playing games with people, what you would invite them to do is total their weekly bills. Total now what there is VAT on, total what you've had a reduction on VAT, and then say what your final bill are. Monroe says the former administration's VAT policy only rewarded large businesses. Wendy's, a big business, pays no VAT on the items that fall within the breadbasket group. 
when they zero rated VAT, Wendy's did not decrease their prices, they absorbed the benefit. So we need to be honest when we speak to people and not insult them. Now Monroe had this bit of advice for the official opposition which he says is seeking to take advantage of poor Bahamians. I would say to the FNM opposition, stop taking poor people as stupid. So people, people are educated in my constituency, Freetown. We read, we understand. Reporting for our news, I'm Berthony McDermott. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Philip Davis defending his assertion that the Minnis administration did not account for $1 billion in liabilities in its pre-election economic and fiscal update report. Opposition leader Dr. Hubert Minnis called Davis's comments reckless and dangerous without providing evidence. However, PM Davis briefly told reporters today that the full accounting of government's fiscal position supports his statement. Wait for the report from the independent accounting firm. And that's what we found out, and that's what it is. Critics have also hit out at the Davis administration's decision to implement value-added tax across the board, including on breadbasket items, despite announcing plans to reduce the rate of VAT to 10% by January. I invite them to go and look at the modeling that was done by independent advisors who are more familiar with tax matters. And if it's up on our website, they'll see how we arrive at it. It'll be a tax neutral number. The PM spoke on the sidelines of the opening of the new Rubis gas station on Gladstone Road. Our news will give you a look around on Friday. And the report detailing the $1 billion disparity in reporting between what the Minnis administration accounted for in its pre-election report and what was found by the Davis administration will be laid in the House of Assembly soon. While some of those loans and bills were not reflected in the supplementary budget, Halkita says they will be itemized in the report from independent firm Deloitte. This isn't going to be, you know, like, um, you know, the former minister who... When he first began, he said um, he found $400 million in bills, and by the time he left, he said he had found $800 million. No, this is an independent report that was commissioned by a reputable uh, company, and the report will be laid. The pre-election budget report was produced just days after then-Shadow Minister for Finance Chester Cooper slammed the prior administration for not producing it. Halkita says the government is committed to fulfilling the obligations left in place and where needed we will speak with creditors. I can't speak to whether it was a rush job or whether there was an effort to paint a rosy picture. What I know is that um, we wanted to be able to say um, here is the true picture. We engaged an independent firm to do it. The BPL rate reduction bond is dead in the water, according to Economic Minister Halkidis. The power company hoped to place the rate reduction bond to raise more than half a billion dollars to pay off legacy debt and fund future capital projects. The bond needed cabinet, cabinet approval and legislative amendments to facilitate the fundraising, but an election was called before that happened. Halkidis says it's time to come up with a new financing plan. You have to come up with a new financing plan. And you come up with a new financing plan by sitting down with your, your creditors mm -hmm. and talking and working out a plan. All right. As the PM said yesterday, this um, rate reduction bond has been on the table, I want to say, for years. And, um, you know, constant um, delays and fees being racked up. And so, um, you know, we have to find a, another way. Most recently, the corporation was still working to get the bond out by the end of the year. Halkita says there are other avenues they can take. We go forward as is. You're looking at, you know, 20% increase in, in electricity in some cases, and, you know, no one can bear that. So we just have to look at a different thing. And as I said, you know, what you do is you talk to your, your creditors, you talk to your stakeholders, and you work things out. And former Deputy Prime Minister Cynthia Mother Pratt was today sworn in as Deputy Governor General in a special ceremony at police headquarters. I, Cynthia Alexandria Pratt, to affirm that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Education Minister Glennis Hannah Martin applauded the appointment, calling Pratt an inspiration to all generations. The little girls, in particular of this country, but boys too, but the little girls, they look up and they say, I could come from 
I think you, you used to talk about how the hole in the roof and all of that. I can come from that level of deprivation, physical or, or, or material deprivation, and to emerge as such a sparkling, outstanding product of God's great shaping. A cloudy evening in the Capitol. Greg Thompson is in the Weather Center with the latest. Thanks, Christina. Welcome, everybody, for your first look at weather on this Thursday evening. Warm and humid conditions outside our studios. Some high clouds, but uh, we'll call it just a few clouds at the low levels. Temperature 83 degrees right now outside our studios. Your winds are out of the southwest at 6 knots, bringing in those warmer temperatures. And your feels like temperature in the mid-80s. Frontal boundary hanging out across the central Bahamas, starting to lift back towards the north. Some showers and thunderstorms associated with that also across the northwest Bahamas, but we are watching a very strong frontal boundary approaching us. Should be in here by tonight. That's your first look at weather. Your extended forecast is still to come. Still to come on our news, when Defense Force officers can expect promotions. But first, the latest on an independent probe at the prison. And you'll still have a chance to wear pink for the cause. That's coming up when our news returns. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight. COVID-19 remains a serious threat. Coronavirus COVID-19 has disrupted our economy, tourism industry, educational system, and put our healthcare facilities and professionals on high alert. Are you prepared? Do you have all the facts? Stay tuned to this network for the very latest news and information on this global pandemic. A request will be made for an independent investigation into matters at the Bahamas Department of Corrections, which resulted in Prison Commissioner Charles Murphy being placed on leave, according to National Security Minister Wayne Monroe. Monroe says he met with the Correctional Services Board where issues were raised. They gave me information about why they were not able to comply with their statutory obligation to put in a report, because I haven't seen a report from them. And all of that will now be collated, amalgamated, and a request will be made to the office of the Prime Minister, because the Prime Minister is responsible for appointing the commission. And this independent investigation will be the one that determines that Mr. Murphy stays on? Either. Well, it will advise the Prime Minister, who ultimately he has responsibility um, over that particular part of it. A few weeks back, Prison Commissioner Charles Murphy was placed on administrative leave pending an investigation into how a prisoner caught COVID during lockup. Murphy, through his lawyer, has denied any wrongdoing. He gave this update into the launch of a review. So there was a review of the COVID medication policies. Uh, the result of that doesn't have to await an independent review. That has just resulted in the need for the budgeting of an additional nineteen to twenty thousand dollars a month to deal with mitigating COVID in the prison for simple things like disinfecting PPEs for the prison co the correctional officers. While Royal Bahamas Defense Force Commodore Raymond King telling reporters today a promotions list for RBDF officers was sent to the Ministry of National Security. King says those will take place by the end of the year. Our promotions, um, it'll be one exercise this year. Ideally, we're hoping to be able to do two exercises per year, but a lot smaller, April and November. That is what we, would, we were hoping to achieve. But given one exercise, uh, the numbers will probably be a bit larger, but we're looking to compensate uh, the men and women of this August um, organization who have worked tirelessly and worked hard. The announcement comes days after Minister of State for the Public Service, Pia glover Roll said promotions were in the works for immigration and prison officers. Last week, Police Commissioner Paul Roll hinted that RBPF promotions could come by the end of the year. King declined to say how many officers will be promoted. And 19 of the 140 board appointments were revealed today by Press Secretary Clint Watson. Among the appointments are Deputy Speaker of the House and Member of Parliament for North Eleuthera, Sylvanus Petty, who will chair the Water and Sewage Corporation. Cabinet will meet to wrap up the remaining appointments on Friday. For a full list of those appointments announced today, visit Our News Bahamas on Facebook.
When our news comes back from the break, doesn't sign up for a pop-up vaccination event. But first, the latest from Buddy Heald and DeAndre Ayton. The details when our news returns. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight. COVID-19 are... remains a serious threat. Coronavirus COVID-19 has disrupted our economy, tourism industry, educational system, and put our healthcare facilities and professionals on high alert. Are you prepared? Do you have all the facts? Stay tuned to this network for the very latest news and information on this global pandemic. This is our news. Welcome back. More than 100 people were vaccinated during a pop-up event at Marathon Mall today. The Ministry of Health and Rotary teaming up to help make vaccinations more accessible. Vaccine Committee member Barry Rassen says while more than 100 people made appointments, many more just walked in and got the jab. We're real excited. We've set up a, a site at the mall at Centre Court for individuals who can just walk in, get their first dose or second dose of Pfizer or Johnson & Johnson. And it's been great because people just say, oh yeah, I haven't done it, let me stop in and get it done. Nice and convenient. Rassen says Pfizer has been the more popular choice so far. With other vaccination centers across the island, he says there's a goal to administer at least 15,000 doses per week. There's a lot more interest. Some, I mean, I, in my personal opinion, a couple of reasons. One, everybody now knows somebody who's died from COVID and needs and wants that protection for themselves and their family. The other is November 8 is coming. And we all know if you want to go shopping in Florida, I shouldn't say that in the mall, then you need to be fully vaccinated. For a full list of vaccine centers, visit vax.gov.bs. Will Buddy Heald and DeAndre Ayton meet for the first time this season? Meanwhile, the World Series now tied after an Astros win in Game 2. Marcellus Hall has the latest. All right, thanks, Christina. Welcome to our sports, everybody. I'm Marcellus Hall. Didn't take long. Both DeAndre Ayton and Buddy Heald on the court at the same time. The two teams and two players meeting up for the first time this regular season. One of them had to win. We'll see which one it was right now. Bayman's Buddy Heald and DeAndre Aiden facing off against each other for the first time in the regular season. Two teams meeting in Phoenix for the matchup. Pretty good one down the stretch. Suns coming up just a bit short at home. Sacramento getting the win. They improved to 2-2 two two on the year. 110-107 to 107 ends up being your final score. Buddy leading the Sacramento Kings. He had 26 points, 5 rebounds, 1 assist, 2 steals, and 2 blocks. Talk about filling out the stat sheet. Meanwhile, DeAndre Ayton, 21 points, 21 rebounds, one assist, one steal, and one block. Certainly doing his part, even though it came in a losing cause. Both teams now getting ready for their next matchups, which will be coming up later on this week. We'll keep you posted on their situations. Kai Jones and his Charlotte Hornets also were in action. But once again, Kai unable to get onto the floor. Another DNP for the young rookie. He's hoping to get some playing time real soon. To the MLB playoffs where the World Series continued last night. Game two between the Houston Astros and Atlanta Braves. This time a different story. Braves took game one. Astros not looking to go down 2 nothing. even if the game was in Atlanta. They get it done with a victory here. 7-2 to two ends up being the final score. They jump all over Max Fareed early on. Able to get the matchup here that they wanted. Now the series tied at 1-1. They shift now to Houston for game three, which will come your way tomorrow. And that's your check on sports for you here on this Thursday. Full details of tonight's Thursday night football game coming your way tomorrow, as well as a setup for the upcoming weekend. That's all ahead in sports. Until then, I'm Marcellus Hall. Back to you. Thanks, Marcellus. Paint the Streets Pink is back this Saturday as the Rotaract Club of Southeast Nassau Centennial hosts the 8th Annual Fun Run Walk. Fundraising director Yasmin Morris says the group is excited to hit the streets after last year's event was canceled due to COVID. The 8th annual Paint the Streets Pink event will take place this Saturday, October 30th, starting at Awaki. Registration is at 5 a.m., 6 a.m. the race begins. So we'll move along West Bay Street to Goodman's Bay, make the turn around the roundabout, make the turn at the roundabout, and head back to Arawaki.
Club president Alicia Hart says the proceeds of this year's events will go toward a good cause. Last year, because of COVID, we were unable to do the event, but this year we decided that we want to put the event on and the donations, part donations are going to the Sister Sister Breast Cancer Support Group. There are medals for the top three in every category that we have. There are four divisions, I think, four or five divisions that we have so different categories we do have prizes i'm not going to say what the prizes are they're a surprise but we do have prizes for our winners online registration ends friday at noon but participants can also register the morning of the race the registration fee of twenty dollars will get you a shirt wristband and a keychain and the dress code is of course pink Still to come on our news, spreading smiles and surprises. But first, a look ahead at the weekend weather forecast. Stay with us. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight. COVID-19 remains a serious threat. Coronavirus COVID-19 has disrupted our economy, tourism industry, educational system, and put our healthcare facilities and professionals on high alert. Are you prepared? Do you have all the facts? Stay tuned to this network for the very latest news and information on this global pandemic. Welcome back to our news. Some thunderstorms ahead. Greg is back in the Weather Center with the details. Thanks again, Christina, and welcome back everybody for your second look at weather. We are tracking a very strong cold front moving into the Florida area with some showers and thunderstorms associated with that. Very strong thunderstorms expected across that area. And we expect that frontal boundary to get into the northwest Bahamas late tonight into early tomorrow morning. So the Grand Bahama, the Bimini, and the Yabacos, you can see some showers and thunderstorms. Here in the capital, by tomorrow, we expect those showers to be affecting us, so a wet Friday expected across our area. We also are watching in the uh, open Atlantic, the National Hurricane Center still giving a 10% chance for a non-tropical low out there in the open Atlantic waters to form, but that is going to be moving away. No problems there. Tropics, remain of the tropics quiet and tropical cyclone formation is not expected through the next five days. Beaching and boating forecast for the northwest and central Bahamas tonight to tomorrow. Your winds will be out of the south to southwest, 15 to 20 knots, caution flag. Seas running 4 to 7 feet, while in the southeast Bahamas, southeast to southerly flow at 10 to 15 knots. Seas running 2 to 4 feet, low tide will be at 8.39 tonight. Here's a look now at your national forecast. Look now at your extended forecast through Tuesday. Showers and thunderstorms expected in our forecast Friday and Saturday. Make sure you make it a great evening, everybody. Back to you, Christina. Thanks, Greg. Well, the time of spooky surprises and sweet treats is upon us, and the team over at Radio House on Shirley Street has a surprise for children of all ages tomorrow from 12 to 4 p.m. So tomorrow they can actually look forward to great things from M&Ms to Snickers, Twix, um, some great things that we have provided by Lightborn Trading, Bahamas Wholesale Agencies as well. So we got all the chips and things and jalapeno poppers, you know, the stuff that they like. Uh, Lickety Split is a longtime sponsor as well. So we have ice cream vouchers for them. And we even have some of the smaller businesses that have come on to provide things like the cookie caterer and everything cupcake. So lots of sweet treats for the kids to enjoy. Sales manager Vanessa Mott says the team wanted to give back to the community and hopefully put some smiles on some faces tomorrow. Last year we weren't able to do it due to COVID and so we're really happy to be back again this year. Got all the candies, all the bags packed, um, lots of sponsors and so we're looking forward to a really great time. Gonna have some M&M's mascots out here as well, the Jambulance, so it's gonna be really great. Well, thank you for joining us for our news tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Christina Dragovich. We'll see you right back here tomorrow night. A brand new episode of On the Record with Jerome Sawyer starts right now. Have a beautiful evening, Bahamas.